after sejara, your brain is like want to fill in back with physics, right? And then you feel like, oh, it's very hard, very hard to start. So what you can do here is you can watch this video, and then after that, you can also share it to your friends. Hopefully, you will be able to help your friends as well. Hi, everyone. In this episode, we will be doing force and motion part one. We will be doing one structured question and three essay question from four different state papers for the 2023 state paper. So without further ado, let's start our first structured question. So the first one we'll look at is actually our Nurguri Pahang structured question. So they ask very simple things about water rocket. So water rocket also hot topic. Lah. So what's the meaning of momentum? So momentum from last time, right, we always use this symbol called P, which is equals to M times V. So what is times so in english we call that the product so therefore the meaning of momentum it is the product of mass and velocity okay so it's the product of mass and velocity so what's the si unit for momentum so once you know this formula which is mass times velocity so you know that mass is actually kg so velocity is actually meter per second so the si unit for momentum it is actually kg meter per second all right next they say when air is pumped into the water rocket to increase the pressure, what will happen to the water rocket in diagram 1 when the trigger is pulled? So usually, in SBM, this question can range anything from 1 to 2 marks. So when we look at this question, we will say that, so uh, the water rocket will be pushed upwards. Why? Okay, so if this is a 2 marks question, we say why? Because the water produces a backward more momentum so your water produces a backward momentum so therefore your water rocket will be pushed upwards which means it pushed forward uh, pushed forwards now state the physics concept involved in 1b so for physics concept whenever it's related to momentum standard one uh, guys uh, this is what the principle of conservation of more momentum so it's a principle of conservation of momentum so therefore if you see this question this question is actually relatively simple very straightforward Okay, our next question on the list is actually our Negri Sembilan essay question which is related to impulsive force. Okay, so guys, you know what? Take out your full step paper. If you have Kertas Kajang, if you have the line paper, you can take and try to write. Of course, I will link this file at the description below. You can download it and do it on your iPad or Microsoft Surface along. Please make sure you write this because writing will actually help you to remember better because your SPF physics is about one week later. Lah, okay, so let's start. So this is a follow-through action and what is the meaning of impulse? So when we think of impulse, right, we will always think of F equals to MV minus MU over T. So of course, this is impulsive force. If I shift this up, this becomes FT equals to MV minus MU. So therefore, this is our impulse. Then this is going to be MV minus MU. So when we look at MV, this is mass times velocity. MU, this is mass times initial velocity. So when we take mass velocity minus mass velocity, means we are changing, we are, we are actually minusing the momentum, correct? So what is meant by impulse? Impulse is actually known as the change in or change of momentum. Okay, just very simple. Impulse is the change in momentum. So... By using suitable physics concept, explain how the follow through can increase the impulse acted on the disc. Okay, because this is the 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 lumpa chakra. Okay, so guys, look look through this. This is a four marks question. So when there's four marks question, right? My suggestion is you try to make your sentences short because if you accidentally took two points, you put two points in the same sentence, you might accidentally um miss out points to write because your two points go to the first sentence already then maybe your teacher only give you one mark so i keep my sentence involved okay first of all what is a follow through so the follow through is the action that let's say for example you throw a ball or you play badminton so your, your action start at the back then you or you throw something forward like that so during this action when you're holding this ball or, or this disc you are moving a longer distance you are moving a longer time taken right correct so in this case we will say number one this follow through okay what was this follow so the follow through increases so we say it increases what increases the time of action okay or the time of movement all right not the time of impact guys this is the time of action so once we go to point number two okay so the past you increase time of action already okay what what's so big deal about it so once you increase time of action you will increase the impulse of the disc okay because this is a uh discus throw spot okay so apparently it's called discus okay oh increase the impulse of the discus so impulse is what you can even bracket and say this is your ft so surplus your impulse of your discus increase already so what is related to this this is your momentum then we can say that this will result in a increase or you can say a larger momentum of the discus 
So you, you see, our, act, our, our answer is very strategic. Right? So we say the time of action, so this is our first point. Then we increase the impulse, this is the second point. The impulse will affect the momentum of the discus. So momentum is mass times velocity, right? Correct? So the pass to the fourth part, then we can say this will allow the discus to travel with higher velocity. Okay, so it increases with a higher velocity. So then momentum will affect my velocity. So you can see, while I'll put my sentences are very short, but there's no overlap one. Time affect your impulse, impulse make your momentum higher, so a larger momentum means you have a higher velocity, so it will travel further. Okay, can. so you can add up, maybe you can travel further because higher velocity. Yeah, so you get four marks, very straightforward one. Then we next see here, you have to calculate a metal ball of mass 500 gram. Now, why I chose this question is because a lot of students, they text me, Hey teacher, can you help me to see this Nuggery Sambilan Punya question 9? Because I think teacher, the answer got mistake. Yes, the answer memang got mistake, alright? So, um, let me discuss the answer for you here. Okay, so every time when we do this kind of question, typical 5 marks calculation. Uh, to me, the 5 marks calculation is 3 marks, because why the question they ask is very simple. What is the weight of the ball? So the only trick here is 500 grams. What do you need to do with this? You have to change it to kg. So 0 0.5 kg, gravity 9.81. So I get 4.905 newton. Remember, three decimal places. Huh? So the velocity of the ball just before it reaches the ground. Okay, so what can we understand here? For me, the best method is always try to draw out your question so that you can understand it step by step, all right? Okay, it is released from the height. Released means what? Understood my initial velocity is zero. I want to find the velocity of the metal ball just before it reaches the ground. So when it reaches the ground, means you are trying to find the final velocity ready, lah, okay? So the displacement traveled here is 10 meters, which is, that is my S value. So, um, okay. My strategy is I will always write out S U V A T after I draw so that I can understand the question better. So my displacement is 10 meters. My initial velocity is Gaussian. My final velocity is what I want to find. So do we have time here? Okay, Bernard, there was one student. He actually asked me, teacher, uh, do they gave me the time, time of impact? Okay, remember, uh, time of impact and the falling time is different. This time is the falling time, which is the, the, the time taken for the ball from atas all the way jato here. You get what I mean? So which means that this is a total different thing. Uh, you cannot go and put the 0 0.5 seconds here. Because this one drop down maybe take more than 0 0.5 seconds. The 0 0.5 seconds is when the ball land on the ground, boom, then 0 0.5 seconds. So here, actually we don't really have the time taken. So what else do we have? Understood when you drop down, Gravity, 9.81, default value, guys, alright? Now, in this video, I won't talk too much on the why is it positive or why is it negative or what, but I'll keep it very simple. If something drops down, the object will move faster, correct? So if the object move faster, burn marks so that the object is accelerating, right? Correct? Means that it's going faster, right? So if it's accelerating, so therefore I will retain the positive value, drop down positive displacement. So what is the formula that I will use is actually V squared equals to U squared plus 2AS. So this formula is actually provided in the formula sheet. So you actually don't have to worry, Bunya. Okay, then you can just flip through the formula sheet. Um, of course, if some of you memorize already, then very good lah. Okay, so my velocity is 14.007 meter per second. Please remember, we are using three decimal places in our final answer already. So uh, I don't care what your, your teacher says, but it's three decimal place, all right? Now, so the three, now the third question here is we're looking at the impulsive force acted on the metal ball if the time of impact is 0.5 seconds. Now, then we can look at the time of impact ready. So F equals to MV minus MU over T. So what is the mass of the object, right? We go back to 500 gram. So here's 0.5, okay, minus 0.5, okay. So this is me, something very, okay, this time taken is 0.5 seconds. Huh? So something worth mentioning here is, remember, the final velocity is 0. The initial velocity is 14.007. Kenapa? Then they will say, teacher, why are so weird one? Why is it like, this is V, but here this 14 is U? Because um, this is the time of impact, meaning to say that when the ball hit on the ground, when the ball hit the ground, what velocity? So when the ball is about to hit the ground, it moves at 14, right? Because he reached the ground at 14, right? Correct? So when it hits the ground, so when it hits the ground, means it stopped already, right? So when it stops, the final velocity is zero. Okay, the final velocity is zero. This initial velocity is 14.07. So which this one, right? When I teach this method, a lot of students, like, they feel like, how did you, yeah, man. But if I do this, ah, my final answer will come out to be negative 14.007. Got problem, though, guys. Got problem, though. Can you think? Why is the answer negative? Does it make sense? Of course it does, right? Okay, because when your object falls down, it's moving downwards, correct? So it hits the ground, 
And why the object stops? Because the floor will push the, the what here, the ball ah, to, so that it stops, right, correct? Imagine if you move forward and you hit a wall. So it means that the wall is pushing against you, right, correct? So when you hit the floor, the floor is pushing against you. That's why here you have a negative answer. Logic or not, you move to the ground, you stop. Why you stop? Because the, the ground push against you. So the negative answer makes complete sense here. Okay, guys, no problem, ah. Okay, now we're going to look at the essay question here. So, so around per mind cricket, okay? So when you look at this question, okay, this question is worth mentioning because I'm going to give you 10 seconds to choose which is the better betting equipment. All right, so I'll give you 10 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7. If you need enough time, you can pause the video. Make sure you try to find out yourself, okay? Because this is a very tricky question. Okay, let me tell you the answer now. So when I do this, I will try to um, eliminate the answers that is very obvious first. I think the thickness of the leg pad is the most obvious one, Kenapa? because we definitely need a thicker, thicker leg pad, right? Because you want to act as a cushion. So once we look at this one, then the next one is we're going to look at the shoe soles. So the shoe, shoe, shoe soles is actually uh, with spike shoe soles. So shoe, shoe soles, shoe soles. With spike, uh, I do one without spike. Okay, why? Because this spot is most likely being played on the... The, the, those like tanah, glass. So one spike so that I can improve the grip. So, and then obviously with carbon fiber uh, material helmet. So definitely, uh, okay, if you compare plastic, plastic is the, the noob material. So therefore, this mass of bet is 1.5 kg. So my betting equipment is W. Okay, I bet some of you here accidentally went and chose uh, the lighter ones. Okay, maybe you would choose X or Y. Uh, because most of the time, uh, when you look at the mass of something, right, most physics question, right, we want lighter mass one, so that it's lighter, easy to swing and everything, right, especially if you do like those badminton uh, question. But in this case, because cricket is a sport that you might not have mined before, right, guys, remember, if you have never mined the sport, try to look at everything first, don't straight away look at the first row, then you straight away decide, the first column straight away decide. So because for cricket, right, the aim is that you want to whack the ball, I think there's a ball that will come, and you want to whack this ball so that the ball can fly very far away, okay, a bit like... Uh, baseball, but I think cricket you have to hit a tiang one, okay? So, I want this to be heavier, so that I can generate more momentum, don't say power. Uh. Okay, so Joe, kita tuliskan this thing together, alright? If you have no paper or no iPad or whatever, at least try to write it on a scrap paper so that you get familiar yourself with, familiarize yourself with all this answering, uh. okay? So guys, so first one, do we write, we want 1.5 kg or we want larger mass of bat? Do we want 1.5 kg or larger mass of bat? So the answer here is obviously larger mass of bat. Okay, why? Because the heavier, the better. If in fact, I've got 1.8 kg, I will take the 1.8 kg. If I've got 2 kg, I will take the 2 kg. Okay, so whenever, if it's like this, right, we don't say the number. But then if you realize, some question, right, they want you to say the number. Later, I've got the example to show you when should we say the number, when should we say larger, so we don't say the number. Okay, I'll show you later, but we look at this question first. So larger mass of bat here is actually why? So that you actually... Uh, has a higher momentum of back, okay? So therefore, you can uh, hit, uh, you, can, you can say that the ball will be hit with higher momentum. Or you can say that so that the ball will have a larger momentum, therefore higher velocity so that can travel further. Macam tu pun boleh, okay? Can? So you will see, right, um, I actually put my answer very long. So I say momentum bad higher, the ball also will hit with higher momentum. So because why? I never know the answer. Okay, so this is bad. Yeah, but Manatao the answer, mungkin they don't say the bad, they say, oh, so that the ball can be hit with higher momentum. Then Manatao you say bad. It's actually correct, but your teacher say, mm, the schema don't have bad. The schema got talk about the ball. So I ball also check out, bad also check out. So both, definitely I will kernel one of it. You get what I mean, right? Okay. Now next, we'll talk about carbon fiber. Okay, why do we want carbon fiber? Okay, the reasoning is very simple. Because in Takisa, in your uh, race car, sometimes in race car you get this question, in bicycle, in whatever sports equipment, carbon fiber is always the default answer. Why? Because it is strong and light. It has one of the highest strength to weight ratio, strong and light. So what is the advantage? So that it can withstand uh, impact. Okay, because this may be right, what if the bola kena your, your, your head, right? So this helmet has to be able to withstand impact and it will not break okay so literally carbon fiber is something that like very 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 strong okay that's why in those sports car they use uh uh this kind of carbon fiber material okay next 
Then you look at with Spike. Okay, for this one, there's a very interesting way to explain this. So with Spike, guys, why Spike is very good? Okay, reasoning is because... Yeah, sorry guys, actually this one I should write red card also. Okay, wait, uh, yeah, because this is the explanation. The purple color is the, the, the category. So just this is the purple color. You write your carbon fiber. Okay, now, so now why you want spike? Okay, spike is because um, it will, it reduces the surface area of contact with ground. So when you reduce the surface area of contact with ground, upper advantage, you can actually increase the pressure on ground. So when you increase the pressure on the ground, what you will increase the grip. Okay? Now you will see that this is very annoying. This is why my students hate me. Because they say teacher need, need to write so long, man. But because you see, this is spike. Spike is what? Related to your surface area, my right, correct. So which means that this will actually be related. It reduces surface area, it increases pressure, increases grip. So again, I've got three different angles to attack the answer. So burn marks out, right? I can guarantee my answer will definitely be what's in the schema. Mana tau, okay, let's say most of the time we see the answer is increased grip. But mana tau maybe that your year, the answer is increased pressure acting on the ground. Also correct, ma, because grip is not a physical term. But we talk about pressure, you have all this force over area, area affect pressure. So which means that your answer will contain more physics, which also up the level of your answer. Okay guys, this is your last time doing SPM physics already. Why you so good, good? Why you don't want to write more answer? Okay, can? Okay, lastly, thicker. Okay, why thicker? So standard, this is to increase your time of impact. And what is your aim here? Is to reduce the impulsive force acting on the on the on the leg so it can reduce injury or can prevent the person from being injured so only it too we got two marks two marks two marks two marks you guys know how to write the final answer right so you just have to state why you want a w and then you just have to write all your four factors in then this is your final two marks okay so if you are not sure how the format of this answering looks like right correct uh you can you know maybe um comment down below then tell me like oh teacher i don't know how the how, how is the table going to look like or how should I write my, my table, then maybe I will do a video on how the essay format should look like. Okay, Ken? Okay, so once we are done with this thing, congratulations, we finished another one more essay question already. Now we're going to look at the next essay question. Okay, our second last essay is actually Kelantan, whereby we talk about this guy jumping across a trolley and then what plus what uh, over a wall. So the first question they ask, what is the type of collision involved in diagram 9.1? Okay, let me tell you the answer for this question. This is an explosion. But I... I want everybody to tell me in the comment section, why is this explosion? Okay, because in the exam, maybe the next question they'll ask you, uh, or, or, or explain why the collision is what that is mentioned above, or based on your what A answer, why is it that? Okay, because a lot of people don't know what is an explosion, all right? So uh, maybe you can comment your answer at the section below, then I will try to reply all the comments, all right? So make sure you try your best. Okay, explain the body of the action that allows him to avoid the risk of injury during the landing. Again, four marks. So what is the idea? Keep your sentences short and simple. Try to don't write too many points in one sentence. So the boy's action is number one, what does he do? He actually bend his knees, or you can say bend his legs. Uh, guys, this, this is just bend his leg, knees, the answer is you have to say during what? During landing. Okay, because, why you need to say this? Because the action happens during landing, it's not like bila bila, okay? So number two, so why he wants to bend his leg during landing is because he wants to increase the time of impact, alright? Or you can say increase the time of landing, alright? So therefore, if he increase the time of impact, time of landing, then number three, what? We can say so that this will reduce the impulsive force acting on the... Uh, legs are uh, or knees and everything. Okay, guys, remember uh, in exam, don't go and write this arrow. Uh. Um, every single time during videos, I will write arrow is so that this you can actually just substitute this word with increase or decrease impulsive force, increase time of impact. So, to make this simple, then after that, last but not least, point number four. Okay, sometimes when you run out of points to write, okay, you're like, oh, did you how uh, to avoid injury? They already say avoid injury. Well, then what can we say here? Okay, sometimes between your second and third answer, there might be a connection. One. Okay, what's the connection? Is there a relationship between your second point and your third point? How does your time of impact affect your impulsive force? So, berdasarkan this formula, mv minus mu over t, we can see that this t and f is actually inversely proportional. Okay, why? Because there's no, no other things with it. Your f and t is inversely proportional. The higher the time, right, the lower the impulsive force. So, you can immediately say 
that because what your impulsive force is inversely proportional to time of impact. Okay, don't, don't just say time, uh, direct time of impact, okay? But if you feel like, ha, did you write inversely proportional? Sometimes we'll get it wrong one, okay? Then I'll tell you what thing is. You know, why time of impact higher, lower impulsive force? Then you just relate that because the higher the time of impact, the lower the impulsive force. So meaning to say you state a hubungan, like a relationship between them, the time of impact will affect the impulsive force. Okay, Ken? So this is uh, how I will write my answer based on these four marks. Okay, Ken? Next part. Okay, we're going to go into our water rocket. Okay, if you see a lot of state paper, they actually ask quite a few water rockets. Who knows? Maybe this might be a hot question. Okay, so we see here, again, 10 seconds. I'm going to give you 10 seconds to decide which is the water rocket that you want to choose. So, um, we got four water rockets here. So, 10 seconds. Okay, your 10 seconds is up. Okay, so in this case, ah, you see, very dangerous, right? Look at ro rocket masters, right? Okay, what is the secret here? The best thing is to look at the aerodynamics of it first because aerodynamics confirm uh, is, is a very like, obvious answer, right? So, the past two, then you see, what's the purpose of this rocket? Okay, sometimes they might come out a trick. So, this is for you to move the longest horizontal distance. If this question become move vertical distance, vertical distance, uh, then you GG already, okay? Horizontal distance is usually the 45 degree. So at 45 degree, according to angry bird principle, this is when your object will travel the furthest, at 45 degrees, because it balances the vertical and horizontal component. Okay, this one you don't really learn very detailed. Uh, it can be proven by calculation, but you probably learned that in college, okay? So 45 degrees, Longest distance, aerodynamics, my answer is confirmed going to be T. So this one, you tap bole pile sala, okay? Why the rocket mass must be small? Standard answer. The smaller the mass, don't say higher velocity. It's the higher the acceleration. If you look at the formula, right? So F is equals to MA. We realize that anything that is lighter will accelerate higher. Example, you cannot say that uh, uh, why do we want uh, objects to be light so that it can have higher velocity? Because, uh, let's say, for example, you say uh, uh, aeroplane, aeroplane big, ma, heavy, ma, but still can travel high velocity. Ah, okay? So, actually, mass and acceleration is a direct relation. Velocity is the result of the acceleration. So, remember, mass, right acceleration, don't write velocity. Okay? So, this has a higher acceleration uh, of the water rocket. Some of them even say, why? Because we can reduce the inertia of the object. Uh, bole juga, okay? High acceleration or reduce inertia. But to me, I think rocket, right? Acceleration more important than inertia. If car, then I'll write inertia. Because inertia of the car is important so that I can stop, I can change direction, right? Correct? Aerodynamic standard answer, Kenapa? Because what I want here to do, uh, what I want to achieve here is because I want to have reduced air resistance. So why do you want to reduce air resistance? Bolela, you can say to increase the acceleration of the water water rocket. So when you have lesser resistance, means that you will accelerate higher. Because why there's lesser lesser uh, force fighting you, so you have a higher resultant force. In fact, you can also say you have higher resultant force because your higher resultant force uh, due to the decrease in air resistance. Alright? Okay, one third. Okay. So guys, volume of water. So you see, we choose one over three. This is the lesser one, ma, correct? So can, can I write my answer is put lesser volume of water inside the, the water rocket. Then later, angle here, I say lower angle because lesser than 90, ma. So in this case, cannot guys. Dua dua pun, you have to write the answer 1 over 3. You have to write 45 degree. Dua dua pun, kena to this number. Okay, why? Because when we look at this water rocket, right, correct? Now, why you need water is because the water needs to be... Water is actually heavy. So there's a larger mass. And when your, when your water comes up with high velocity, it produces a very high backward momentum. All right, backward mama. Okay? So that your rocket will actually produce the very big forward momentum. But then, masala too, I cannot put everything with water. Why? Because if I put everything with water, there's no air to push the water out. So I need water, but tak boleh full water, but I cannot have 2 liter water also. I need the balance of water to air. So this is proven ready one, ah, okay? You need 1 third water, 2 thirds air. So when I explain this thing, I have to say so that the high pressure air can fill 2 over 3 of volume of the water rocket so that a high pressure air can fill two-thirds of volume of the water rocket. 
Okay, so um, yeah, it sounds like you didn't really explain this thing, but that's how you write the answer. Uh, if you want to elaborate so that the uh, air can filter that to push the the water out with a higher velocity, you need chuko pressure to push the water out with higher velocity. Okay, then we're gonna talk about this forty-five degree punya uh, angle of launching. Okay, so why I want this angle of launching forty-five? Because this will produce the largest, or you can say the longest horizontal distance. So it produces the largest, longest, furthest horizontal distance. Okay, because your aim here is horizontal distance. Okay, can all right. Okay, if you got no problem, then jump. We will see the calculation here. Okay, so then don't forget uh, your final answer is T, and then you have to write all your factors as well. Okay, now we're gonna look at our next calculation. This is a bullet shot from a gun with a velocity of one hundred meter per second. So uh, here you have to calculate five marks. Guys, I told you before, five marks is easy marks. So momentum of the bullet after the gun is fired. That's how you need. So bullet twenty gram, bullet velocity one hundred meter per second. So very simple, right? Okay, my bullet punya mass times velocity. So this 20 grams, okay, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to divide by 1000 white, change to kg gun. Okay, the velocity here is 100 meter per second. So if I calculate this, I will get this to be 2 kg meter per second. Remember guys, don't, don't, don't like find it very um, confusing or what. It's just mass times velocity. How hard can it be? Okay, can. So it's kg meter per second. Right SI, you need 2 to 3 marks already. What about the recoil velocity of the gun? Even easier. If I know that the, the bullet moves 2 kg meter per second, so according to the principle of conservation of momentum, and if you understand what is explosion, guys, please comment down below what is explosion, all right? Uh, what's the criteria for explosion? Okay, so we know that the momentum equals, so here I'm going to have 2 kg meter per second, okay? But those OG students, okay, like OG, OG students, like those gang one, they know that this one has to be negative 2 kg meter per second. Why? Because the gun is moving backwards, the bullet is moving forward. So while I put in schema Jawaban, they might or they might not care. If they don't care, then you're lucky. But if you care, then you are. If they care about this, then you don't put negative or you will down. So for me, as a, as a teacher, I will try to do a better practice. So this move backwards, right? So mass times velocity, if the forward is 2, then my backward is negative 2 kg meter per second. Okay, can kg mass negative 1. So the gun is 200 grams, so this is 0 0.2. The velocity of the gun, the recoil, this is negative 2. Only it to, if I shift over and I get, my velocity will be negative 10 meter per second. So that is the recoil velocity of the gun. Okay, that's it, very simple. On our next essay question, we're going to look at the Malacca state paper, okay? So the Malacca one has a high jump, and they ask you what is meaning of force. Okay, actually for meaning of force, there are a lot of versions, but I write a version that is more commonly acceptable. So it is actually the ability to change the shape or motion of an object. Okay, if you have force, you can either squeeze the object, then you change the shape, or you can push it, or you can stop it, or you can change direction. So you can change the shape or change the state of motion or motion now, okay? Okay, let me just write state of motion as well. State of motion of an object, okay? Uh, if you look at the schema, the schema is very lame, uh, they just say, force is push or pull, forwards only. Okay, very, very no one, okay? Now next, we need to compare the thickness. When we see comparison, we know that this is definitely question 11, which this is the compulsory essay question. So compare thickness, okay, look at the question first. This is five marks. Five marks means you've got five things to write, so you do this one by one. Compare the thickness, compare the impact time, compare the impulsive force. So three things ready up. Uh, thickness, impact time, impulsive force. Relate the impact time and the impulsive force. Fourth, then name the lot involved. So which means in this question, there's actually also five things you have to write. So make sure you do this step by step, okay? Now guys, untuk menjimat masa, I'm just gonna like quickly talk about this, and I'll write like shortcut a bit. Thickness of mattress, 11.2 and 11.1, which are thicker. So you can see, this is thicker, right? The, the, the uh, 11.2, right? So you can see the 11.2 is thicker than 11.1. Remember, uh, I don't encourage you to write this greater or smaller than. Make sure you write thicker. Okay, can. But because I have no space, so I'm just going to write greater or, or, or larger or smaller, uh, less than. So the impact time, so we can say, obviously this is thicker. So the impact time will be longer. Uh, so 11.2 is larger than 11.1. So remember, it's longer impact time. Okay. Impulsive force, leh. Then because this has larger impact, so this one less painful, right? So 11.2 is lesser than 11.1, we can say lower impulsive force. So thicker mattress, longer time of impact, lower impulsive force. So I give you the, the adjective already, okay? 
Next, relate the impact time and the athlete's impulsive force. How? Also, senang ini. You just have to say that the longer the impact time, okay, then what? The lower the impulsive force. Okay, so longer impact time will result in a lower impulsive force. Name the law involved. Okay, this one quite tricky. Okay, guys, I ask you a question. Why when you fall down, you will feel like it's very painful? Why? Because when you fall down, uh, you actually have a force, but then the floor gives you back a force. So which means that you push down, the floor push you up. So there's a force and then there's a backward force. So what's that? The action reaction. So that is your Newton's third law. Oops, Newton's. Third law of motion. Guys, remember, of motion is important. A lot of people just write Newton's third law because Newton got gravitational law. Got Kepler's, I mean, Kepler's is not Newton, but, but there's a lot of laws. So make sure you say law of motion. So that's the law of motion. Then here is an athlete wow, trying to do a long jump. So they make this into three marks and then one mark. Okay, so uh, let's do this. Huh? So four marks question, keep it simple. So why it bends the knee? First one, why bend knee? To increase your time of impact. Okay, number two. Why? Because you want to reduce the impulsive force. Okay, here they never tell you why they have to bend. I mean, yeah, they never tell you why. So why do you want to reduce impulsive force? Is to reduce chance of injury or, or avoid injury. So I write reduce chance of injury. You want to write, uh, will not get injured easily. Also can, right? Can understand? So now, next one, we're going to talk about what is the force acting on the athlete when he is in the air. Okay, upper knee. Force acting on the elite. Okay, remember guys, if exam asks you this question, can you listen properly? Huh? What is the force by the person going down? So this this picture that I've just drawn here, this is not gravitational force, guys. It's not gravitational force. This is actually known as weight. Okay, why? Because this is your force, you act on the ground. Force acted by the person. But here is on the person. So if it's on the person, then the answer is gravitational force. Because this is the force acting on, on the person. Ma. Who is acting on the person? The earth. Ma. Earth do what to you? Earth tarik you, right? So that is your gravitational force. Okay? Can So three points here, one point here. Juga total is four marks. Alright? Okay, the last question, last essay for today. Okay, before we do our last, let's thank the SMK, Kelana, Jaya, PJ, and the Sultan Abdul Samad teacher for compiling this topic. Uh, I think it's very helpful for most of everybody here. Okay? Can Now, so, okay, let's look at this question. So we got two points to talk about the pole. Movement is one, athlete is one, safety is one. Okay. So what is the pole that you need to use here? Okay, I will say that the pole that I use here has to be a uh, highly elastic. Okay, why do I want this thing to be highly elastic? Okay, because what I want the pole here is okay, the pole has to bend and so that I can it can push me up, right? Correct. So what do I want it to store? I want it to store this thing known as elastic potential energy so that if, if it's highly elastic, then it will be able to store elastic potential energy to push the person higher. So this is a physics term, all right? Okay, can? Uh, I don't like the answer, can bend. Why do you want it to bend? So that you can store the energy up. Besides that, you want it to be strong, okay? Why? Because it has to support, okay, the weight of the athlete, all right? So what do you mean by it has to support the weight of the athlete? Because this guy, all his weight is going to be supported by the tiang only. So this, this pole. So if this pole suddenly breaks, this guy will free fall at least, I think, 3 to 4 meters. And if you drop from one story high, I think your bone will break. Lah, okay? So it has to be able to support the weight of the athlete. Okay, by the way, pernah break one of these things during Olympic. All right? Okay, number two, the mover of the athlete, it has to run with high velocity. Okay, why high velocity? Now, because when you do a high jump or, or pole vault, this is actually gravitational potential energy. So how can you make gravitational potential energy? So you can pin jump your kinetic energy, pin jump some elastic potential energy, so these two and your strength, so you can go up to become your gravitational potential energy. You faham, right? So in this case, run with high velocity bumper because you want to increase the kinetic energy of the shepherd, of the athlete. So that's how you make your answer more like complete, increase the kinetic energy. If you want, you can say, wow, so they can produce higher gravitational potential energy so that you can jump across it. Pun boleh, ah. Okay, what about the athlete clothing? For the athlete clothing, uh, as usual, it must be tight and lighter, okay? Or you can say low density, okay? Because low density also very much, so there's tight, I mean light. So why do you want it to be tight and light? So you want to reduce the air resistance 
don't say increase velocity, so you can have a higher acceleration. Okay? Then the keselamatan, safety of the athlete, so you must have what? This cutty right, correct? So we can say thick mattress during landing. Okay, so why thick mattress during landing? Why do you want this uh, thing? So guys, standard answer sekali lagi, you want to increase the time of impact because you want to reduce the impulsive force. Okay, can all right. Now, yeah, so guys, in a time of about 45 minutes, we managed to finish one structured question and three essay questions, all right? So in the next few days, I'll be posting similar videos like this. Hopefully, it will be able to help you for your SPM, okay? I'll be having a four-hour last-minute revision, um, uh, which is on the February 18th, one day, 24 hours before our physics exam paper. So during that four hours, I will spam question with everybody. So if you wish to or if you want to join this class, feel free to comment at the... Uh, section below, I will personally message you, alright? So, um, thank you everyone, so, hope to see you in my next video.